from the wilderness of Kodiak Island, Alaska. This is Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier with your host, Robin Bearfield. In a land full of peril and vicious animals, humans are the most dangerous predators of all. When a son disappears, his parents suffer a blow from which they will never recover. But how do parents cope when two of their sons vanish? Imagine if those two brothers disappeared a decade apart. I've mentioned before the alarming statistics about the number of people who disappear in Alaska. People walk into the woods and never return. They go out to sea on a boat and the vessel vanishes. Far too many have climbed into the cockpit of an airplane and evaporated into thin air. In this episode, though, I'll tell you the tragic, unbelievable account of the disappearances of two brothers. Charles and Lisa Palmer had a daughter, Hannah, and three sons, Chris, Chucky, and Michael. In 1999, the Palmer family lived in Wasilla, Alaska, a town of approximately 10,000 residents, located 43 miles, or 69.2 kilometers, northeast of Anchorage. On June 3, 1999, 15-year-old Michael Palmer asked his parents if he could spend the night at his friend's home with a few of his buddies. Instead of sleeping in the friend's house, the boys stayed in an outbuilding they referred to as the clubhouse. In the wee hours of June 4th, the boys slipped away, riding their bicycles to a series of high school graduation parties in the area. Michael's friends said Michael drank several beers throughout the night, but they insisted he acted fine and was not incapacitated by the alcohol. According to other partygoers, a fight broke out at the last party the boys attended. Some observers said someone hit Michael in the head during the scuffle. Other partygoers claimed they saw someone beat Michael until his face and head were bloody. Michael's friends claimed Michael seemed fine at 4 a.m. when they began the 9-mile or 14.5-kilometer bike ride home from the last party. According to Mike's pals, they started together on their bikes, but after a while, Mike fell behind them. They pulled over and waited for Mike at the 7-Eleven on the park's highway. But when he never arrived, the boys said they thought Mike must have gone to his own home. The others eventually continued down the road on their bikes. The boys later told authorities they last saw Michael at the intersection of Pittman Road and Silver Drive, an area near the Little Susitna River. Michael's mother, Lisa, worked as a nursing assistant at Providence, Alaska Medical Center. She called the home where Michael was staying on the morning of June 4th and the person who answered the phone told her Michael was asleep in the clubhouse. When Lisa Palmer arrived home from her shift at 3 p.m., she realized her son was missing, and she learned he never spent the night at his friend's house. Lisa called the Alaska State Troopers. By then, Michael had been gone for 11 hours. Michael's parents told authorities that Michael was a good boy, he was a happy teenager who was excited about getting his driver's license soon. They were certain Michael would never run away from home. Investigators also did not believe Michael vanished voluntarily. The next day, they discovered the bike Michael had been riding in the Little Susitna River, and searchers found his wet sneakers next to a private airstrip located 200 yards from the Little Susitna River. Fifty searchers combed the woods near the river, but they found no trace of Michael Palmer. (music) 
Some people wondered if Michael fell into the river and died of hypothermia, but the authorities discounted this theory. Deadly glacial silt fills many of the rivers in Alaska. Not only does the silt make the rivers murky, but when a human falls into the river, the silt quickly fills their clothes, dragging them to the bottom where they stay submerged. The Little Susitna River, though, is a shallow, clear river with little silt. Furthermore, a log jam spanned the river a short distance downstream from where searchers found Michael's bike. If Michael had fallen into the river, the logs would have caught his body as he floated downstream. Police brought in tracker dogs, but the dogs did not follow Michael's scent to the river. Instead, it was as if he evaporated. Or perhaps he'd never been on the road at all. Maybe he never left the party. Michael's oldest brother, Chris, did not believe the bike found in the river was the one Michael had been riding. And Michael's father remained skeptical of the story Mike's three friends told about the night Mike disappeared. The father hired two different private investigators to look into the matter. One of the investigators moved from Wasilla when someone made threats against her life. The other investigator uncovered rumors suggesting Michael had never left the party and was either murdered or kidnapped. The troopers have never substantiated this rumor. Months after Michael disappeared, a local boy stated he saw someone beat and then shoot Michael on a bridge. But the boy claimed he made up the story when questioned by authorities. Michael's oldest brother, Chris, said he heard rumors about fights at the graduation party, and he thinks something terrible happened to his brother at the party. Michael's father, believes his youngest son is dead. You can find many rumors about Michael's disappearance on the internet. Several people claim they know who murdered Michael Palmer, and they say he died at the last party the boys attended. Authorities also heard some of these rumors. In a newspaper account six weeks after Michael disappeared, Lieutenant Jay Yakapats with the Alaska State Troopers said they'd received hundreds of tips chased down dozens of leads, and performed several polygraph tests. At this point, though, Yakupat said, everyone listed as a suspect passed with flying colors. Michael Palmer's case remains open. Hopefully, if anyone has credible information, they will eventually report it to the Alaska State Troopers, and perhaps the Palmers will finally be able to bury Michael. Michael is a Caucasian male, with brown blonde hair and blue eyes. He is left-handed. You can find an age progression of photo of Michael in the show notes for this episode. The image from the Charlie Project is an estimation of what Michael might look like today. Let me take a short break to thank everyone at the puzzle game app Best Fiends for supporting murder and mystery in the last frontier. I appreciate you for sponsoring my podcast and for creating a great game. I like writing about true crime, and I'm intrigued by how investigators solve or don't solve a murder or a disappearance. I've always liked puzzles. The bad thing about researching and writing true crime, though, is that I know these horrible acts happen to real people, and their deaths left their friends and families devastated. Sometimes these stories overwhelm me, and I have to take a step back from my computer. I've been talking about Best Fiends for a while now, and I truly love the game. It's bright and cheerful with funny insect characters to help me solve each creative puzzle. The game has thousands of levels, and each level is different. Some puzzles take me many tries to successfully complete, and I whiz through others on the first go. After playing Best Fiends for only a few minutes, I feel energized and uplifted. I am currently on level 665, called Aqueous Architecture. We all have stress in our lives, especially lately. Give Best Fiends a try. 
If you are like me, I bet it will make you smile. I also guess if you like listening to true crime, you will enjoy challenging your mind with this game. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Charles and Lisa Palmer divorced, but the family remained close over the years. Their grief for Michael bound them together instead of wrenching them apart. Then, the unthinkable happened. On April 10, 2010, nearly 11 years after his brother vanished, Chucky Palmer disappeared while riding his snow machine with family and friends near Talkeetna, Alaska. 70 miles or 113 kilometers north of Wasilla. Chucky, his older brother Chris, their stepfather, and two friends went on a guy's trip to the Talkeetna Mountains, where they planned to spend a few days staying in a cabin and riding their snow machines near Bald Mountain. On the morning of April 10th, the handlebar on Chris's snow machine snapped off, and he stayed at the cabin to work on his machine. Chris was an experienced snow machine rider, but Chucky was not. Still, Chucky was looking forward to riding his new snow machine with the other guys. According to the group riding with Chucky, all went well until they were heading back to the cabin on the main trail. Around 7.15 p.m., Chucky became separated from the rest of the group. And then, just like his brother over a decade earlier, Chucky disappeared. His fellow riders said they last saw Chucky traveling the wrong way in the opposite direction from the cabin. Chucky wore appropriate clothes for the cold weather, but he did not have a GPS, a radio, a satellite phone, food, or water. As with his brother before him, Chucky's friends did not report him missing for nearly 12 hours, and by then a snowstorm and high winds hampered the search party. Chucky's friend found his machine in deep snow, 12 miles or 19 kilometers from the cabin, and Alaska state troopers guessed he must have gone off on a side trail and then got stuck in the soft snow. Oddly, despite the soft, deep snow, investigators found no footprints near the snow machine, and they saw no sign of Chucky's helmet. It snowed several inches after Chucky disappeared, but it seems unlikely the snow could have completely concealed the conspicuous tracks Chucky would have made in the snow if he left his machine in search of the main trail in the cabin. A group of troopers and fire and rescue volunteers searched for Chucky, but severe weather conditions with high winds and heavy snow proved too dangerous for them to continue, and they suspended the search after five days. The troopers enacted a second extensive search in May with over 40 Alaska Mountain Rescue searchers, search and rescue dogs, and aircraft. They scoured the area near where they found Chucky's snow machine, but discovered nothing. Trooper Dan Valentine said they flew over the area until well into June, but never found a trace of Chucky Palmer. They never located a glove, a boot, or a footprint, and they saw no sign of animals or birds feeding on something in the area. Chucky was riding at the back of the pack, and according to the others, they did not realize he had dropped behind them until they saw him riding the wrong direction. I've found no explanation for why they didn't follow him and tell him to turn around. Chris Palmer thinks the older men were traveling too fast. Chucky probably couldn't keep up with them, and he became disoriented. Chris felt partially responsible for Chucky's disappearance and believed if he had been with the group, he could have looked out for his brother. 
Since Michael's disappearance nearly 11 years earlier, Chris made it his job to watch out for the slowest members of any group he accompanied. He knew if he had been with the snow machiners, he would have kept an eye on Chucky. What happened to Chucky when he went off the trail, and why are there no footprints near his machine? Fire Chief Ken Farina, who was involved in the search, said the only explanation he could fathom for Chucky's disappearance was an alien abduction. There were no clues and no evidence Chucky was ever anywhere near the area where his friends found his snow machine. Unsubstantiated claims on the Internet suggest Chucky's riding companions might have altered the scene near his snow machine, but no evidence exists to support these statements. Chucky Palmer was 30 years old when he disappeared, and he left behind three daughters. It must be a nightmare to lose a loved one to violence, but it must be even worse to have someone close to you vanish because you would never know what happened to them. When a child disappears, the parents suffer unspeakable pain, but to lose two children under mysterious circumstances exceeds the realm of what most of us could endure. What happened to Michael and Chucky Palmer? If you have any information about the disappearances of these individuals, please contact the Alaska State Troopers. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you to my patrons for your support. I appreciate you. In addition to writing and podcasting about true crime, I'm an Alaska wilderness mystery author, and I have written four novels. Please check the show notes for more information about my novels set in the Alaska wilderness. I will be back soon with another edition of Murder and Mystery in the Last Frontier. (laughs) 